Now, multi-task question, it could be anything. It could also have a certain amount of like MCQ in it, or it could be a gap filling question. Or they could give a section of it that you know a part of your cash flow maybe. From investing activities, you have to calculate. You cannot be wasting time on one particular question, and you know, just wasting a lot of time, and then realizing that you have very few hours or minutes left, and a lot of paper is left. So, you really don't need to learn the format of balance sheet or P&L or cash flows because this is a you know, computer-based exam. The formats are given. You will just have to calculate the values. So, hi everyone. For introduction, I am ACC Disha Chauhan, a proud FinTrammer and faculty for financial accounting. I also teach corporate and business law and business and technology at FinTram Global. So, welcome to the FA orientation. So, let's firstly start off by you know understanding what is financial accounting. Let's understand about FA. So financial accounting is basically a subject wherein you know you're studying if you have already uh, done in your 11th and 12th accounts on the same thing the knowledge is getting built on uh, here again you'll be uh, studying all of the same things like your journal entries what is a double entry system the basic rules uh, assets liabilities what are those balance sheet profit and loss account apart from that of course few other things which you would have probably not studied so much in detail back in your 11th or 12th accounts group accounting and analysis interpretation the ratios so all of that now why it is very important to understand uh, financial accounting and take this subject seriously is firstly this is your basic accounting so as an accountant as if you are preparing to become an ecc of course your account needs to be good so as an accountant you need to know these basics these are your literally the basic things that every accountant would need to know apart from that whatever you study in fa this is something which is going to continue when you reach your skill level whether when you are giving your fr that is your financial reporting exam or even in your professional level which is your sbr so the basics the very very basics are taught in financial accounting here whatever the standards we learn they are not uh, taught in too much detail you just know okay this is a standard this is the brief about it that okay a standard has all of these things uh, basically let's say if it's an inventory standard we learn what uh, all that standard is about and few other things but of course far 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 detail you will learn this in your financial reporting and sbr exam where it all those standards are then deep dived into and all of that is you know the standards remain the same of course and few others are added depending on the level but they are taught in more 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 detail at this level you just need to very have a basic uh, knowledge and basic understanding about those standards and of course you start off with your you know balance sheet pnl preparation understanding all of that uh, cash flows at a very basic level when you reach your fr or sbr level of course again the difficulty level is going to increase and it's going to contain many other elements to it at this level it's far basic and pretty similar to whatever you have been studying in your 11 12th accounts just on that a little bit more knowledge will be developed but all in all it still remains at a very basic level when you reach your fr or sbr that is the time when you know this is going to get more complex uh, at this level it is still very quite basic if you compare to your uh, of course uh, skill or professional level so here you will be learning again about your double entry techniques preparation of your basic financial statements for your entities whether it's your simple uh, consolidated financial statements for group or just for an entity and of course whatever you're studying all the skills that you are uh, learning something that is going to develop in the future so it's and it is of course important that your basics are right you are understanding the basic because if you do not understand all of this then of course when you are reaching that level when you will be studying about fr or sbr it's going to be very difficult for you so it's very important to pay attention and to understand not just to study for the sake of clearing an exam but really understand each concept because this is something which is going to be useful in the future also 
so moving on to the syllabus area so these are the various syllabus areas and uh, which of course are covered by our sessions also so let's have a look at each one in detail so this is a you know this has been taken from the official ACCA website only so the same syllabus areas we have and these are the various you know things in those syllabus areas so let's go one by one First syllabus area is about the context and what is the purpose of financial reporting. So here basically you understand what exactly is financial reporting. What are the various users? Basically, who are the stakeholders? Who are they? 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 IFRS का बीच ब्रीफ टच अप ऑन है कि IFRS में क्या कौन सी कमिटीज हैं कैसे बनता है ऑल ऑफ दैट क्या ड्यूटीज है रिस्पांसिबिलिटीज है उनकी जो कि चार्ज्ड है विद गवर्नेंस तो ये सारी चीजें आर कवर्ड इन दिस सिलेबस एरिया देन यू मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट सिलेबस एरिया व्हिच इज योर क्वालिटेटिव कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन सो हियर ऑफ कोर्स यू विल लर्न अबाउट द वेरियस क्वालिटेटिव एंड एनहांसिंग कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ योर फाइनेंशियल इंफॉर्मेशन नथिंग टू एलैबोरेट वेरी सिंपल then you move on to your uh, again now towards the accounting use of double entry and accounting system so here you firstly understand what exactly is your double entry bookkeeping something which you have already studied if you studied in 11th 12th account same thing nothing different here and what are the various you know sources of accounting information what exactly is a ledger account that okay left side debit credit right side so the basics which you have already must have studied if you have already cleared your 11th and 12th accounts so same thing what are the various books of prime entry whether it's your cash uh, book or your sales day book so all these books of prime entry we learn about that we learn about journals then we move on to about recording those transaction and events now here we'll come into the picture the various standards and of course like i said the standards at this level are very basic not really studying in detail in depth this is going to become way more you know uh, bigger and a little more complex also at a different level at this level it's pretty basic so here with regards to your sale purchases with regards to your cash you know your cash book inventory is to inventory what is the standard what is net realizable value all of that p4 method have weighted average cost method how is that calculated all of that and we've covered of course in our sessions the calculations tangible non current assets firstly we understand what is a non current asset what are current assets what is tangible what is intangible so all of this is something is you know basically in this at very basic level you are understanding all of these concepts depreciation kya hota hai kaise calculate karte hain intangibles then kya hota hai intangibles jab hote hain to for tangible we charge depreciation intangibles mein there is amortization so what is amortization basically the same thing as depreciation this the term is different then other standards like your accruals prepayments how do you treat them in your financial statements is something we learn about then uh, moving on about your receivables and payables uh, that is your debtors and creditors how exactly would you treat them in your financial statements with regards to that we study provisions and contingencies what is a provision when will it qualify as a provision what are the conditions that need to be fulfilled what will be a contingent liability what will be a contingent asset how are you going to treat these contingent liabilities and asset in your financial statements how is a provision going to appear in your financial statements so all of is this something covered in this particular section then capital structure and finance cost basically here exactly what is the structure of the capital you know share capital we learn about various types uh, what is your authorized capital issued capital called up capital the different terms so all of that you learn you would have seen in balance sheet you know issued capital we write uh, called up capital so what exactly the meaning of all of that then preparing of trial balance again something which 11th and 12th accounts very basic what is a trial balance how would you correct any errors what are the some errors that a trial balance can spot what are those errors which a trial balance cannot you know find out control accounts reconciliation bank reconciliation 
and of course your suspense account so suspense account something that you open up when your let's say trial balance is not tiling or you do not know where to post uh, that amount in that account so for temporarily you open a suspense account but of course none of them should exist when you are finally drawing up your financial statement so you need to close up all your suspense account so with regards to that all the rules and everything we are going to be studying all of that so moving on to the next syllabus area which is when you're preparing your basic financial statements so here of course you get the knowledge of statement of financial position also known as your balance sheet basically how does a balance sheet look what are items come what are assets liabilities equity then your statement of pnl and other comprehensive income what are the notes to accounts so like when you are studying the tangible uh, let's say chapter you will see in the notes to account for the tangible you Uh, make a bifurcation. You make a table that okay, exactly what are the movements, disposables happening. So all of that are shown in your notes to account. So all of that with regards to you'll be studying. What are the events that happen after your reporting period, and any events that happen up after your reporting period, whether they are adjusting events or your non-adjusting events, how do you treat for them? So all of that is something covered in this session. Then statement of cash flows. you learn how to prepare a cash flow statements uh, you know your investing activities financing activities cash flow from your operations and exactly how do you prepare it so something that is covered in this chapter incomplete records when there are incomplete records what do you use you use your accounting equation balance sheet equation how to find out that missing value then preparing of your simple consolidated financial statement so here you learn about some new things like a parent company and subsidiary so i could be a company and i could have some control over other companies so those companies are my subsidiary so when is control established you learn that and then when you consolidate this parent with subsidiaries how is the consolidation done what are the rules regard to consolidation any intergroup trading that was happening so all of that is covered in that then you could have instead of control if you have significant influence on an entity then that entity becomes your associate so how do you deal with that how do you show that investment in associate in your accounts so something which is covered in this syllabus area and the final syllabus area which is your interpretation of these financial statements so financial statements are prepared now of course you have to interpret them right so why do you do that what is the importance or purpose of analyzing these statements you need to understand that and then there are various ratio from your profitability ratios to your liquidity ratios wherein you judge how the company is performing how it is doing so these are the ratios something which you have to learn and you have to then analyze this. so you will calculate the ratios you will analyze okay this year the company's gross profit ratio was this much last year it was this much what were the major reasons that you know for the change so something that you will need to figure out and analyze so that is your analysis part of your financial statements so these are the various syllabus areas which are of course covered by the various sessions and these are the various chapters so this is all financial accounting is all about from your balance sheet pnl cash flows to your ratios then of course all those standards and the standards here like i said very basic level and only few standards are there when you reach your fr level this is going to increase to a, of course a very bigger number all right moving on to your exam structure it is a 2 hour exam and there are two sections so your section a will be your pure mcqs objective question multiple choice questions when you're going to get 35 such questions each would be worth 2 marks your section b is your multi task question here you're going to get two questions but each worth 15 marks now multi task question it could be anything it could also have a certain amount of like mcq in it or it could be a gap filling question or they could give a section of it that you know a part of your cash flow maybe from investing activities you have to calculate so anything like that could be given as i have also told in the session you really don't need to learn the format of balance sheet or pnl or cash flows because this is a you know computer based exam the formats are given and you will just have to calculate the values but is it is of course important and better if you just know the formats also because in the future when you move on it will be beneficial and in in general also for an accountant it is of course uh, good to know basic balance sheet pnl and cash flows format so that is the exam structure two sections two hours 
and of course this is a practical plus theory exam there are theoretical parts also but there are practical there are questions that you have to solve so time management is hence very very important you cannot be wasting time on one particular question and you know just wasting a lot of time and then realizing that you have very few hours or minutes left and a lot of paper is left so that's why here are some tips for answering mcqs firstly is that you need to read the question thoroughly sometimes what happens we look at a question and we feel okay this is something which i have done previously this is on the same line so i feel that would be the answer and you just go ahead and do that you should never do that always read the question thoroughly and fully also once you are whenever you are reading any question whichever section you are make sure you are giving your 100% of attention and focus on that question because sometimes what happens we are reading but we are thinking of something else we are thinking of the past question that oh whether did i do it properly or not and we tend to not read this question properly and then you are wasting that time then you are like oh i didn't read this properly and then you will again start reading so you are essentially just wasting minutes which are very valuable in this exam so make sure once a question done forget about it move on you have to remember these words you have to move on you cannot dwell upon a question and just keep on thinking about that one question done forget about it go to the next question start afresh and read that question of course thoroughly then you need to of course think before answering don't rush sometimes we just read first option and we feel oh this looks like the answer and just click on that no you will have to read all the options and then analyze okay that a is the answer or c is the answer you have to think up before answering you have to read it properly is why sometimes they ask let's say advantages and you have not read it properly you feel they are asking about disadvantages and the first option could be a disadvantage and you just click on that so it's important you are reading the question you're looking at the requirement what exactly are they asking me and you're thinking well before answering that is you are looking at all of the options before you rush and just select an answer if you do not have like find any of the options to match your answer which is of course fine 100% of paper sabko uh, aana is of course not going to be possible it's not like ki aapko har ek cheez aati hogi wo possible nahi hai agar aati ho to well and good but that's very rare that everyone is going to know everything obviously not but whatever you know you should try to of course do that well so if you are not able to answer any question that's absolutely fine and normal there are going to be questions in the exam which you will not be able to answer that is absolutely fine not just in this exam every other exam of acc or in general also whenever we give in school or colleges of course there are always something which we are not able to answer so in that case what you should be doing you should reread that question to ensure that you are understanding it and answering that requirement so firstly try to understand okay what exactly they are asking and then try to answer that requirement you should eliminate any obviously wrong answer so in an mcq when there are four options there are times when few options you can just look at it and understand that definitely this cannot be the answer so first try to find out if are there any options which you feel that this definitely cannot be the answer so you should first try to eliminate that then let's say you have done that and you are considering which of the remaining answers most likely and from that you will select that okay i feel a c are definitely not the answer then between b and d you will analyze and try to judge okay what could be the answer and then of course select the option but if you are still unsure if you are still not able to get it absolutely fine just make a note of it flag that question and continue to the next question do not keep wasting time on that question that oh i am not able to answer this question and just keep on wasting minutes on that no first read it not able to uh, answer try these techniques still not happening no problem do not waste a single second on it move on you should revisit your unanswered questions and target them with a fresh set of eyes once you have completed everything you are more calmer and relaxed because you know you have done a majority portion so then you should target these questions because then you are even more confident and the chances of then cracking those questions are even higher so if you are not able to answer just leave it for now and of course come back later and try to solve it 
and answer all questions even if you're unsure of the answer this is something very important but very sadly i don't know why some students still do not do that they leave out answers uh, they do not answer like certain questions um, they feel i don't know the answer so let me just leave it there is no negative marking there is no negative marking in acc exams which is a very big benefit which is a very big thing so if since there is no negative marking why should you not take a chance when there are options given so of course you should try everything to solve it but if you are still not able to solve it then at least click on some answer something is better than nothing always maybe by luck that might be the right answer so you should give it a try if in the last moment sometime it happens we are solving and we don't have much time we let's have just 5 minutes left and maybe 6 7 questions are remaining so you try to read and solve it but the clock is ticking you have really less time still also i will say even if you have not read the question just click on an option and submit you should at least attempt all questions whether or not you were able to read it properly or not also it's fine if the time has gone and you are just left with few minutes or seconds and few questions are unanswered just click on any option always attempt the entire paper maybe yes whatever you click could be the wrong answer also but it could also be the right answer so you have to take the chance and there is no negative marking so you don't have to really worry about that part so do do give an uh, you know all other questions you should be attempting of course you should first try to solve it yourself but due to xyz reason when you are not able to solve whether because of time or you just don't know that fine not to worry but attempt that question that is very important students who attempt all the questions of course have a more chance of clearing than those students who do not what should be your approach to preparation now this is an on demand exam which means you will choose the date and you will give the paper as per your convenience acc does not say that okay this particular date you have to appear for this exam now this is a very good benefit but at the same time what happens students tend to procrastinate that is we see we say that oh i have to decide so okay i'll give exam in 5 weeks time then you start studying you're not made a plan you're studying here and then two weeks have passed you have not covered much then you say oh i'll give another four weeks and then i'll give exam and you just keep on wasting time weeks are passing by and you are not appeared for the exam before you start you need to set out a date now of course that date could be shifted because like i said on demand exam but at least set out a date and try not to shift it for unnecessary reasons if something big happens then of course fine if let's somebody has fallen sick but choose a date and of course choose a date wherein you feel there are not any other commitments so if you are in college and you have your college work going on assignments exams then of course you should not be picking any date near to that choose a date when you are relatively free that is you do not have any other commitments and pick a date in advance so let's say you decide today that okay 6 weeks from now i will appear from exam so you find out that date and then you start accordingly you cannot just start simply saying that oh i'll give in 3 weeks times or 6 weeks times or a month's time you need to at least pick a date and then work towards that goal so step 1 has to be that of course you need to complete the entire syllabus there is no cherry picking here you and i cannot decide what is important what is not important in terms of what will be coming because we have not set the paper so we cannot say that oh this topic looks interesting so this might come i'll study this that topic look boring so i'm going to leave that no we cannot do that we have to complete the entire syllabus the syllabus has been made in such a way that whatever they have kept is important and you have to make sure and you know assume that anything and everything can come that's why it's there in the syllabus so we are not here to do cherry picking we are not going to say i'll just study these topics i'll leave this topic does not seem important no everything and anything can come so we have to complete the entire syllabus second step practice questions now this is a practical exam as well there are theoretical things also but it is essentially a practical exam so of course you need to practice a lot what happens is we see questions we see videos and we think that okay the teacher is solving i am able to understand everything is going good maybe you understanding but until and unless you you know pick up that pen and solve it 
you can't really say that you were able to you know understand it because when you look at it you think yeah, yeah i understood these are the steps this is how i'll calculate for example let's say fifo you will be learning in the sessions how to calculate how, how does the fifo method uh, you know goes along so you'll see the video you will probably understand and you'll say that yeah i can solve this question but when you start solving you might encounter a few problems and then you can know okay this was the problem i don't remember that so that's why it's important to practice looking and solving are two different things what happens is we always look at it and we used to always think even when i used to study that oh i'll solve it looking is enough i'll just look at the solutions no but until and unless you solve on your own you then only come to know where are you falling back and how much time also you are taking because at the end it's all about the time time management is very important and that is why you have to practice questions you're done with questions practice again and again you have to practice a lot literally in this exam if you do not practice the the chances of then clearing will be far lower than if you would have practiced practicing is very important solving questions again and again is very important you have to solve questions if you solved again again go back to that whether in any particular area if you feel you are not strong in some area that you should of course focus even more but in general also everything in the syllabus all the questions you have to completely do it on your own also not just by looking at it but actually solving it yourself you need to watch the revision session at least two times so fintram provides you with the revision boot camp when we have the revision session which is basically all of your you know sessions that we have completed a revision session is a consolidation of that wherein we have again come and you know just revised all of those topics so before the exam rather than watching 10 videos 10 sessions it's of course better to just go through the revision session and in general minimum it is two times of course you can watch it more than that but at least two times you should definitely go through the revision session itself then you must watch the video question marathon at least twice and not just watch solve it watching is different like i said solving is different watch it at least two times there are two parts section a section b both are important and along with that you have to solve it so you have to solve those questions you will look at it you will think oh i know everything yes this is the way it should be done but you should pick up the pen and try to solve it on your own if you do not practice i'm telling you in the exam you are going to face a lot of difficulties because time management comes into the picture then when you are practicing you will try to understand then you will understand oh how much time am i taking why am i taking so long and then of course as you practice you will start improving so that's why practicing questions is very very important i cannot stress enough on that do a mock exam and not only do a mock exam but do it as if you know you are actually appearing for an exam so when you are giving a mock exam you need to make the literally the same conditions as if you are appearing for an exam lock yourself for in a room put on a timer for 2 hours and make sure those 2 hours you're not getting up not checking your phone not doing anything behave like as if you are actually given an exam given your exam and if you know let's say the time has passed to us at that time you should stop and see how much you have solved then you should of course continue to solve the rest of the paper because to see whether you are able to do it or not but you should analyze at that point how much was i able to solve giving a mock exam is very important students who do not give a mock exam their chances are lesser than those to of clearing than those students who have given a mock exam giving a mock exam that to in those conditions is important if you are taking 3 4 hours for a mock exam then there is literally no point the time management because of that you have to give the mock exam so make sure you are putting on the time of 2 hours and giving the mock exams in that only you'll able to judge that okay i'm taking so much time in reading a question in solving a question how do i improve and of course if you have practiced in the past like i said then you will probably the chances are that you will be able to complete it in those two hours and of course step 7 is definitely attend your exam like i said this is an on demand exam there is no date given you have to pick so make sure you're picking the right date in terms of your other commitments keeping in that in mind decide in advance when are you planning to give the exam maybe in between there were few things happening and there's a delay of few days or a week happening 
that's absolutely fine but at least set out a target and then of course uh, give your exam attend your exam on that particular day and uh, it's important that you are planning so fintram also shares a study plan with you wherein you get a six week study plan wherein week wise we have said which day you can cover what chapter when you should be practicing question and how should you go about it so you know if you are not making your own study plan then definitely follow that study plan as much as possible of course for some people six weeks could be eight weeks for some people maybe they do not have other commitments six weeks could be four weeks also so depending on your life your lifestyle your commitments you have to you know plan it for yourself you are the best judge of that what are the commitments you are having so accordingly you will have to plan and of course attend the exam don't just uh, we are not just studying for, for like that right you have to at the end attend that's why i'm saying pick a date advance nobody is saying that you book your exam on that day but just sell, keep a date selected in your mind and work towards a date you could prefer studying in the morning someone prefers studying in the night whatever suits you whatever floats your boat you do that i will never say that okay morning mein aap ko utke padhna chahiye raat mein everyone is different i used to study till late night 2 am 3 am so it depends whatever you like but you have to make a plan if you are going to college if you have any other commitments so you have to decide right weekdays you are busy so still you have to decide okay one hour at least i will study every day two hours whatever it is weekends you are free so don't waste time on other things that okay i'll go out for movies of course you can do that as well but you have to plan that also everything can be planned like you can do leisure also and you can study also but you have to make a plan for it you can't just waste an entire day on just roaming around and nobody saying just study one entire day also in that also you take breaks you do other things whatever you like but make a plan is what i'm saying planning is very important don't just say that okay 6 free flow now i'll give exam and i'm just studying one day one chapter doing here and there few questions no plan every day plan that okay this day by this week i will complete this much syllabus and then see that were you able to do why you were not able to do and all of that planning is important those students who plan who structure they are obviously you know the chances of them clearing are higher and those who do not do that who are just wasting time then there's no point because at the end of the day if you do not clear you again will have to give right and again i have to go through that it's better first time only you given you 100% there would be still maybe a chance that even after putting your 100% you didn't clear which could happen uh, not just this exam or any other exam but one should not lose hope and again try to you know see what you went wrong exactly but if first time only if you follow everything given your 100% then there are good chances that you should be clearing just follow this approach make a study plan and work towards it divide your day hours how many hours you are planning to study and work accordingly how much questions you want to solve how many questions you think you will be able to complete in a day and you know gradually you will only see you are improving if one day you are able to do let's say five questions you will see by the next week maybe in one day you are able to do eight questions 10 questions so that's going to come on its own but you will have to plan and like i said whatever suits morning evening afternoon whenever you find time study whenever you can watch the lectures you know there is flexibility in that it's not like you have to watch at one particular time so watch whenever you can and you know accordingly whenever you want to study study revise keep on revising the previous chapters also so that you don't forget anything and just like i said practicing is very important especially in this paper this is a you know a practical exam there are questions you have to solve so time management comes into picture and you will be able to manage time properly prob uh, properly only when you have practiced enough all right so i'll stop sharing my screen now and if any one of you have any uh, queries or anything you can let me know so are you guys in college uh, i'll go one by one harshul are you in college or um yes ma'am i'm in college all right uh, have you given any other papers before of acc uh, no ma'am not yet okay all right what about you girish girish can you hear me 
Gun Gun. Ma'am, can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Um, Ma'am, where to practice the questions from? Like, what is the best, uh, basically, uh, platform to use for the questions? So, if you have enrolled with FinTram Global for, let's say, FA, we provide you with, uh, you know, the sessions and, of course, with the revision bootcamp, the question marathon, wherein we have so many questions, concept-based questions, past exam questions. So honestly, that is enough. If you go through the video question marathon, you really do not have to go to 10 other places. Of course, there are students who like to practice. So they go to other books, whether it's Kaplan, BPP, that's up to you. But all in all, what FinTram is providing, that is more than enough. You are free to, of course, go and explore other options, but it is enough. No doubt in that. Okay, ma'am. Uh, so ma'am, is that uh, like the... the, uh, the material that Pintram provides us with, is it enough for BT as well as FA? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for BT, law, FA and the faculty itself. And okay. for actually other subjects also, I know uh, the faculty makes the material in such a way that yes, everything is covered. All your, your syllabus area, subjects, uh, everything, basically all the chapters and the questions are enough that you get a flavor of exam. So yeah, for BT, FA, everything, law, uh, you know, the question marathon is more than enough. But of course, one is free to practice other things, but it it is good enough for you to clear or, you know, it gives you enough practice. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, no worries. Gungun, Nishan, are you guys in college or have you given any exams? Yes, Gungun. We have given the papers. I'm just waiting for the results. Then, like, then I'm going to apply. All right. Okay. All the best. Uh, Ishan? Yes, ma'am. What about you? Um, um, first results. I'm waiting for the results. Then only my parents will think. Okay. Okay. Uh, Vibha? I'm waiting for the results. Okay. Uh, what about you, Priyanka? Are you in college? Have you given any exams? Priyanka Rui. Can you guys hear me? Priyanka Rui. Okay, I hope this was helpful anyways. Uh, how many papers can I take for level one? Uh, for knowledge level, you can uh, like, one can appear for two exams also at a time, but we generally suggest that you know, go one by one and it's on demand exam. So you can choose uh, once you clear uh, the first three papers of knowledge level and the first paper of skill level, which is your law. All these four exams are your, uh, you know, on demand exam that is available 365 days. You give it on a computer instant results. And after that, the uh, other papers of skill and professional, the date comes like it's a session sitting September, December, March, June. It's of three year, right? Sorry? It's of three year. So it depends. It's not like everyone will take three years. People clear it in two years also. Some take four years. Depending, you know, some people are working and doing. Some people are studying and doing. So it depends. There are people who clear in uh, two years also. It's not like it will take three years only. It okay. depends on you how many exams you are able to clear in a year and, you know, what speed at you have picked up. But usually, yeah, it takes three years, generally on an average, but it could take less or more also. That, of course, depends on case to case basis. Any other queries anyone has? So I hope this was helpful and, you know, you got a brief flavor of what exactly the financial accounting exam is all about. And the main thing I would say is, of course, practicing. Practicing is really important. And you might just think I'm a teacher, so I'm just saying, oh, practice is important. But no, practicing is very important and uh, managing your time and having a plan. If you have a plan, then things are going to be fairly easier for you rather than not having a plan. And then, you know, you're here and there. So make sure you make a plan and then go for it. Uh, all the best uh, for your other endeavors also. And I'll just wait for a minute more if you have any other queries, otherwise we'll end it. Anyone, any queries, any question?
the computer based or offline like in omr sheet sort of this is computer based or uh, your uh, first four papers all are computer based exams okay yeah okay thank you girish anything else anyone all right if nobody has any questions then i would would not want to hold up uh, thank you for joining in and if you are already pursuing icc with us or you plan to reach out to fintram global in case you have any other questions concerns the team will be happy to take up and you can visit our website uh, you know and if there's anything else you can reach out to the team we'll be very happy to help you out thank you so much for joining in i hope this was helpful uh if there's nothing else then i will be signing off thank you All thank right. you thank you thank you thank you all right then i'll be signing off thank you everyone have a good day bye bye